Hey, hey guys, I'm Jeff the Homestead Dad, and welcome to the Homestead. If you guys watched the announcement video, you knew that I was about to do this video. So, the cook that I'm going to do right now, I'm going to start some pork butts this evening, overnight, um, because we're having a party tomorrow at 4. It's going to be super hot tomorrow, and I've had plenty of problems with pork butts not finishing fast enough for parties in the late afternoon. Well, I'll start them at even 6 o'clock in the morning, and... I just don't, it's not enough time. So I'm going to start them this evening, sometime between 11 and 12. It's about 10, 15 right now. So I'm going to go ahead and get the grill started here, get it up to 250, and then I'm going to put the two pork butts on. I'm going to put the pork butts on tonight. And then even if they finish a little bit early tomorrow, I can throw them in a cooler or I can pull them, throw them in the cooler, throw them in the toaster oven. It'll be perfect. They'll be outstanding. I'm also going to do um, a ham. I'm going to smoke a ham. But that I'm going to do tomorrow morning because that won't take as long. It's a, it's a smaller ham. It's not going to take nearly as long. So I'm going to do that tomorrow morning. And then I'm also going to do chicken drumsticks. And that'll only take probably an hour and a half, two hours tops. So that will be done tomorrow as well. So let's go ahead and get the Kamado, the Kong Kamado Grill by Grilla Grills started right now. And then we can get it up to temperature. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be starting a little spot right here down there underneath the place setter with a a propane torch i'm just going to start that spot i'm going to leave the vent up top wide open the vent down low wide open and then we'll let it get up to temperature but for the slow and slow cooking you only want to start one spot you don't want to start two or three spots so i'll start one spot here and uh then we'll get it up to temp so let's go ahead and start the torch here started. I'm going to go ahead and close this part of the grate and then I'm going to close the lid and we'll come back and check in a minute. Okay so I don't know if you guys can see this. I've got my grill grate temperature sensor right there connected to my Inkbird Wi-Fi enabled or actually Bluetooth um, sensor. Charge this thing up. It should be good for the night. So I'm going to go ahead and close up the grill this and then we'll see what the uh, the temperature starts to do um, you can see it's 75 degrees out right now which is accurate um, but we're gonna leave I've left the, the top part here open all the way the bottom all the way so we have full airflow um, so hopefully that temp starts creeping up and then we can get it uh, locked in around 250 and once we do that we will uh, put the meat on Okay, while the grill gets up to temperature, I'm going to go ahead and unwrap these two butts and take them out there. I'm going to get my probes ready to put them in here. Um, I put them fat side up. I think that's the way to do it, but either way, it turns out great. One thing I want to say about rubs is you can get any rub you want. Um, I know people spend a ton of money on rubs, and I know there's some um, amazing rubs out there. You can also spend a couple dollars at a grocery store and buy their rub, and it'll be perfectly fine it'll be the best meat you've ever had um i bought stuff at our grocery store the kroger and it's been amazing so this one is a carolina style like mustard type this one is a kansas city sweet and smoky and then the ham is a texas style so i figured we'd try three different states so i'm gonna go ahead and unwrap these and then we will um, take them outside So you can season these up to 24 hours early. These ones I did about six hours ago. Um, 
any amount of time that you do it ahead of time will just kind of soak into the, the meat a little bit more. So let's go ahead and take these out, get the probes into it, and uh, check the temperature on the grill. So as you can see, the grill is at 216, which is perfect. We'll open it up at about 225, put these on there, and then um, close it back up. Okay, you can see we're at 223. I've got the other two probes plugged in. I'm gonna go ahead and open the grill and set these on here, and then I'll show you how I adjust the vents. Okay, so the grill's open. I'm gonna go ahead and set one. Of course, I'm trying to do this with one hand so I can light this up a little bit for you guys. We'll go ahead and set one right here. That should work. I don't want it touching the grill probe so you don't get false temperature readings. And then put the other one right here. This one's a little bit more over the heat. In fact, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. I'm going to rotate them. Hold on one second. That's my temperature gauge telling me I'm off. Hold on one second. Let's go ahead and rotate it this way and this way. So you don't need them over direct heat. Okay, so you can see now I have them here and here, a little bit less over the direct heat. I'm gonna go ahead and insert the probes. One probe will go in here. The other probe will go in there. Now the temperatures have dropped down to 43 and 43. I'm going to go ahead and close this up. <clears throat> now we're going to go ahead and wait for that temperature to come back up. Uh, it should come up really quickly. Uh, because it already had that heat built up so when it gets to 225 again I'm gonna go ahead let me see if I can turn my camera or my light on again on my phone um, you can see it's already up to 156 there I'm gonna close this down to half of one you can see there's a one two three zero one two three I will put that to half and I will close this down almost all the way and try to lock that in at 250 degrees. You do it at 225 so that the rest of the temperature that it coasts up to, it'll coast up to 250 and then stay locked in there. So that's the plan. Okay, so you guys can see this is what the app looks like. So the grill temperature is 217, the first probe is 41, the second probe is 43. So I'm gonna go ahead, it's up to 219 now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to adjust the, um, the vent here. So you guys can see the vent holes are all the way open. A little bit difficult to see with the shadow, but trust me, they're all the way open. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to close them down to half like that. So it's about halfway between zero and one, a little bit more closed. And then down here, I'm going to close it to about two rows of holes, which is <clears throat> about six holes. Now, with any luck, we will cruise into 250, and this will start to slow down, and then we'll lock in at 250, and I can go to bed. So let's watch it for a bit. So I'm in the house, in the office, and this is the beauty of having a Wi-Fi um, temperature chart. So you see that? That's the temperature chart. And you can see, I don't know if you can see the temperature, 230. It's actually dropped a degree. It kind of locked in at 230. It's come down a little bit. So I'm going to go open up the vent a little bit, see if we can get up to 250 and get it uh, locked in there. But I didn't have to be sitting out there toying with it. I can be watching the temperature from in here, watching a little Bad Batch on Disney+. Plus. So I'm going to go adjust that. We'll see what happens uh, if we can get it up to 250. And then as soon as I get it locked in, I'm going to bed. Good morning, everybody. So I woke up this morning at 5.30 and freaked out because the alarms hadn't gone off 
and I hadn't woken up to check on the grill at all. So I was like, oh no, maybe the app disconnected or it's gone down to zero and I've ruined the meat. But no, that didn't happen. It actually, let me see if I, I took some pictures because I was afraid it was going to um, disconnect. Let me turn the camera around and I'm going to see if I can show you these graphs. Okay, so this was the um, the temperature graph for the grill. And you can see the line down here is 190. That's the bottom I set it at. This is 300. So I went to bed right about there. And you can see it coasted up to maybe like 280. And then it was down to like 248 by the time I took this picture. It was perfect. It uh, I've never had it happen. So that was for like seven hours. This was the temperature graph for the pork butt. It just kept on rising. And this is the temperature for the other one. This one is a little bit lower. So if we look at it now, temperature's at 234, which is a little bit lower, but not bad. And then the pork butts are at 187 and 180. So now, you guys have some stuff on you. So now the problem that I might have is that these finish too early. Now, I'm tired of getting stressed out about the meat not finishing early enough for the party, which is why I did this overnight. The party's not till four, it's now 721. It's not done yet. Uh, it's at 187 and 180, they need to get to 195. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull them when they get to 195, I'm going to double foil wrap them and then I'm gonna wrap them in a towel. And I'm gonna to put them in a cooler. Uh, pretty quick here, I'm gonna go grab the ham. Probably after I pull the first one, I'm gonna go grab that picnic. Um, I'm gonna put that on here and start smoking that. And then, like I said, the chicken um, drumsticks should only take a couple hours, so I'm not worried about that. I'll probably start doing those closer to party time. I am gonna go ahead and open this up and show you the goodness and why everybody should do pork butt because it is so amazing. But before I do that, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, if you haven't hated everything you've seen so far, please go ahead and click that subscribe button, the bell notification. Apparently it really helps out the channel and um, I'd really appreciate it. So uh, without further ado, let's see the star of the show. So here we go. I'll do this quick. Oh my Lanta. That looks so good. Okay, let's close it back up. There are some videos where you wish you could not smell things. Uh, I was watching Fowler's Makery and Mischief the other day, and he was setting lobster traps and he used stinky bait. And he's like, you guys are all lucky that this isn't smell-o-vision. This is not one of those cases. When I walked out the door, I could smell it coming out the vents. I wish you guys could smell this. This smells so, so good. And this is going to taste even better. So I'm going to leave it here for a little bit. I might open the vent just a little bit to go get it to go back to about 250. Um, but honestly, I'll probably actually now that I think about it, I'm gonna leave it right where it's at at 230. Um, let's see what it goes back up to. That's yeah, at 219 now because I just opened it. Leave it there, see what the pork does, and then, like I said, when it's time to wrap it, I'll bring you guys along. Okay, guys, the pork is done. We hit uh, 198 on one of them, 194 on the other. We actually ran to go get this dude some donuts it's his birthday he's seven years old today um so his grandparents are coming over in fact they may be pulling him in the driveway right now i'm gonna pull this off we're gonna throw it on here we're gonna double um foil wrap it i've got some magnets on here to hold it down let's get moving it's a couple in a bag so. we'll do the little one first oh boy maybe Maybe it won't even want to come out. Later. See ya! Hello. I'm gonna need a spatula. This is falling apart so good. Try this again with a spatula that we can get underneath it. Uh, I will say, if you're gonna get into smoking, get yourself a decent. Um, there we go. Get yourself a decent set of grill tools. Oh man, it's falling apart. Um, 
because when you get bigger things like briskets and pork butts, you know, not just burger flipping, you want to have something that can actually hold up and pick up the meat. Bring you guys over here. All right, so take the magnets off of one side. Pass it up. Magnets off the other side. Ooh, that's hot. Those ones, 190 something degrees internal temperature. It's going to be a little warm. Okay, and now we'll go ahead and move this over here. Ooh, that ripped through. That's all right. We'll wrap it the other way here. Okay, so this is all wrapped up in tin foil. We're gonna go ahead and put it in this cooler down here. We've got some towels on the floor of the cooler. Put that down there, close this up for now. And now let's pull out the next one. Let's, I'm gonna prep the table again. Ow. Table, it down there. Okay, let's pull this next one. Oh, buddy. Man, so I'm doing intermittent fasting right now, and I'm in a fasting period. Otherwise, I would be engorging myself with this because it is so. Maybe I'll. But I shouldn't. I don't want to wreck it. Okay. So I'm going to keep this. Open, or closed down um, so I can keep the heat in there because like I said I'm gonna throw a, a, um, a picnic on here ham in just a little bit so let's go ahead get this wrapped up magnets off now it's not real windy today it was breezy earlier but in days when it gets super windy it can be uh, interesting and the magnets make all the difference in the world. There's one wrap. Ha! Let's go ahead and move this here. Okay, all wrapped up. We'll go ahead. We got one in there. Let's see if I can do this. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put that on top here, like that. One more towel. Put in like that. I'm gonna leave this in the sun. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning. Uh, the party's at four, so that's gonna stay in there for six hours. Maybe we'll bring it out a little bit early and pull it. Um, with the two of them in there with them double foil wrapped in the cooler it's gonna be a hot day it should be just fine i'll let you know um in the meantime i'm gonna go ahead and go grab that picnic we'll throw that on here put a temperature probe in it and start the process all over again okay so here's our picnic i'm gonna go ahead and throw that on here and try to use just a spatula here get my hands all dirty this like i said has the texas style rub on it <clears throat> um, and then I'm just gonna go ahead sorry for the shakiness I'm gonna take this probe and I'm gonna stick it right in there like that I'm gonna close this down turn back on the thermometer the one thing about this thermometer is in the Sun it's almost impossible to read so instead of trying to do that 
let's see what happens if we pull up our barbecue app. Okay, so the temperature is down to 189. The, uh, I don't know if you guys can read this either. Let's go in the barn. Well, now we should be able to read it. So the temperature is up to 194. The picnic is at 45. We will uh, watch the temperature again. I want to keep that at around 250, a little bit below, and then we'll pull that off. I think it said the picnic you can pull off when it gets to 165, so it doesn't have nearly as far to go. So uh, I'm gonna do some chores around here while this keeps on working. Okay guys, so it's been a few hours. That uh, picnic still needs some time. Um, the temperature kind of dropped down to near 200 while I was doing some things. So I've gotten it going back up to like 275. That's what the chicken needs to be at. And that'll help finish the, um, the picnic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray these wings or legs with um, some olive oil. I've already put some yard bird. This is one of our favorites. It's got a little kick to it. Um, but if you like that, it's uh, yard bird by Plowboys, uh, Kansas City style. Um, put these on the same rack as the picnic. And then I'm gonna put these ones on the top rack, which is right there. And this is honey barbecue. Um, and this is a Texas style. So again, going different states. So let's go ahead and get that done right now. This little misto pressurized thing with some uh, olive oil in it. So let's go ahead and, oh, why is it not spraying this? There we go, a little bit there. I'm gonna put some olive oil on this. There we go. Olive oil, and while we're doing it, I'll put it on here too. Olive oil on this side. Okay, so that's on one side. Now we're going to go ahead and put that on. I'm going to flip them over and put that side down. Then I will oil the other side and season the other side as well. One, two. about quarter to um, three so hopefully these are done in about an hour and a half because the party starts at four and we want to eat near four so that's the plan we'll see what happens I pulled the, um, the chicken and put them in the oven put some foil on them because they finished before oh they smell really good finished a little bit earlier than I thought they would so we're putting them in there we've still got the two uh, pork butts in the um, cooler and the other one's at like 175 now so it's getting close we could eat it if we had to okay the picnic shoulder is still on there it's still at like 175 we're gonna leave that not everybody's here yet so we're gonna pull the cooler inside and we're gonna start pulling some pork i'm looking forward to this it's certainly hot in here Ooh, it's really hot. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. They stayed pretty hot. We'll close that down while we pull this one. Yeah, they make actually like claws that you can 
Scout, stay out of here. Okay. So, um, should I put this for salad together? Uh, sure. Jason, it didn't turn out. You'll have to have chicken. Actually, the chicken should be good too, so. It's pretty remarkable the difference between them. It makes it all the way to. Yeah, to 205. Like edible versus. Yeah. I mean, and this has been in the cooler for five hours, six hours. Yeah, so does that like keep it cooking at all? I don't know. You know how like steak keep, keeps yeah. cooking after you. Yeah. Okay. I like crusty. Wow. I mean, I think that's the way to go, is do it early and leave it in a cooler so that you don't have to worry about it finishing on time. Mm -hmm. I think it's you guys cool saw it pulled back, so. so easily. You want to get a hand to put it in? Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'll try to slice it then. Yeah, one comes out comes out really fast. Okay, so the aftermath is all right here. Everything turned out really good. Even the, the picnic shoulder, um, which only got up to 175, we just sliced that and it was still super, super good. So I encourage you, get a pork butt, get a picnic shoulder, um, do some chicken drumsticks. The drumsticks, I think we're done in a little over an hour. Normally it takes an hour and a half to two hours. I'm not sure why it took so little time. Um, but even putting those in the oven for like an hour, um, we just, with the oven off, we set them in the oven, covered them in foil. They came out, they were super hot still, and they were super, super tasty. I still love the Yardbird um, rub, it's so good. So if you have any questions, leave them in the uh, comments below. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. If you've gotten this far in the video and you haven't already clicked on that thumbs up, I would really appreciate it. It helps out the channel a ton. Also click on the subscribe button, that helps as much as well. Um, we will be having some more uh, videos. Keep watching the uh, grilling collab and uh, go watch the playlist. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you guys next time. Bye-bye.